This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Hunted them in forests, condemned them to the axe. So Talif, a world from a world, was born. Those wise enough, with vision enough, created portals for passage between worlds, as by law of Talif, all and any had the choice to stay or go. There, in a land of green hills, high mountains, deep forests and seas, magics thrived, and under the leader, chosen and choosing, peace held. But this was not an ending. The dark god plotted in his dark world and gathered his army of the demons and the damned. With time, with blood, he harnessed enough power to pass through the portal and into Talif. There he courted a young witch, one chosen and choosing as Tishoch, and blinded her with love and lies. She gave him a son, and in secret, while the mother lay in enchanted sleep, he drank power from the babe, night after night. But a mother's love holds great magic, so she woke from this forced sleep, and awakening led an army against the god to cast him back and seal the portal. When it was done, she deemed herself unworthy to lead as Tishoch, so cast the sword back into Loch Nafirinya and gave the staff to the one who lifted the sword from the water. So once again peace held, and in the peace of the green hills and deep forests of Talaf, her son grew. One day, with pride and sorrow, she watched him lift the sword from the lake and take his place as Tishoch. Under him peace held, Justice was served with wisdom and compassion. The crops grew, and magics thrived. Fate deemed he would meet and love a woman, a child of man. Through his choice and hers, he brought her through the portal to his world, and there, out of love and joy, they made a child, a daughter. The magics in her beamed bright, and for three years she knew only love. But the dark god's thirst was not slaked, and his rage only grew. Once again, he amassed his powers through blood sacrifices and dark magics, aided by a witch who turned from the bright to the dark. He stole the child, imprisoned her in a glass cage beneath the waters near the portal, while her father, her grandmother, while all the warriors of Talif rode or flew on wing or dragon to save her, she who had only known love— New fear. And that fear in one so bright bloomed into a rage as wild as the gods. So her power bloomed with it, and struck out at the god who was her own blood, her own kin. She broke her cage, even as the fay attacked the god and his forces. Once again the god was cast out, and left beneath the ruins of his black castle. Her mother, human in her fear, and with a fear that turned to bias and a bias that tainted love, demanded to take the child to the world of man, to have the child's memory of magics and talif and all who dwelled there erased. Out of love for the child and for the mother, the father granted this, and took them through the portal, lived with them in the world of man, returning to talif for love, for duty, as often as he could. But though the love for the child never dimmed for the father, the love between the child of man and the child of fay couldn't survive, and his efforts to live in both worlds carved pieces from his heart. Yet again the god threatened Talif and the worlds beyond it, and once again the fay, led by the Tishach, defended. The fay drove him back, but with his dark magics, with his black sword, the god killed the son he'd made. So another time for mourning, and another time of choosing. A young boy, mourning the Tishach as he had mourned his own father, lifted the sword from the lake, took up the staff. While the boy grew into a man, one who sat in the chair of justice in the capital or helped his brother and sister with their farm in the valley, while he flew over Talif on his dragon and trained for the battle all knew would come, the daughter lived in the world of man. 
There, with her mother's fear and resentment, she was taught to step back and never forward, to look down rather than up, to fold her hands instead of reach. She lived a quiet life that brought little joy.